I knew that they were going to continue the Skylines franchise after the third one. What? Is it in the Skyline universe? Good fool me. Occupation Rainfall, that name though, is brought to us by director Luke Spark and stars Dan Ewing, Ken Yong, and Lawrence Mackerel. Okay, so this is actually a sequel to a movie called Occupation that came out in 2018. Now, I just saw that just a moment ago when I was looking up someone's name, and that kind of throws off my whole review because one of the biggest issues I had with this movie was that it felt like the middle movie in a trilogy that I had not seen either of side of. And what do you know? There is actually a movie that precedes this one and I just didn't know it. So that kind of throws that whole complaint out the window. Now that being said, this movie takes place about two years into an alien invasion on Earth. We the humans, as we do in these kinds of movies, are getting our asses whipped. There's a resistance force and we are fighting against the oppressors and even some of the aliens are on our side. But overall, Earth not doing so hot. When the resistance learns of something called rainfall that could possibly be the end to the war, they send in a small group of troops to go and see what the hell rainfall is. So we follow this small group of soldiers headed up by Dan Ewing's character as they go to figure out what rainfall is and what it could possibly mean to the end of the war. Given that this movie does have a first chapter that I haven't experienced, as I said a few minutes ago, I can't really hold that against it. Without having seen that first chapter, the movie does do a decent enough job of catching you up to speed with what's going on. Sure, there's a lot of stuff that I don't understand, like how all this started, why it started, and maybe some of the deeper things that are going on in the world, but I basically get the idea aliens came in, wiped us out, and now we're fighting against them. Something this movie does really well overall is its technical aspects, like the special effects and the shots and just overall the battle scenes and all that. This movie looks like it cost a shit ton of money. It didn't. They did a really good job with taking a small amount of money and making this movie look fantastic. This seems like a very well established world. We've got lots of different alien races and apparently stuff that was happening I guess in the first movie that is referenced here. It just seems like there's a lot of history here which I guess the first movie may have gone over more. I don't really know. I did like that. This seems like a very well established world. But great effects and a well established lore do not necessarily make a great movie. An occupation Rainfall is not a great movie, but it's not a bad movie either. What it is, is a fun movie. It knows what it is, it does not try and be more than that. It's got lots of machismo and lots of over-the-top performances. This movie knows that it's kind of goofy and over-the-top, and it rolls with it, and I can kind of respect that. While there are a few parts that were a little long-winded and not the most interesting in the world, it's never flat-out boring. I'd like to think that if I had seen the first film, I may have had a bit more of a connection to what was going on in the beginning of this film. Having not seen that movie though, it did take me a few minutes in the beginning to kind of get up to speed and really latch onto the characters in the world. Because while this isn't the most complex story in the world, there is quite a few things going on here. You've got the whole mission that the vast majority of the movie does follow with Dan Ewing's character and his crew, but you've also got the people back at the main base who are wanting to save the world and taking some steps that might not be the best option. The question is posed, when is it going too far? How much is it worth to save all of our people? And are we willing to do some of the things that would ensure our safety, but possibly wipe out a whole nother race? I did like this. It's not the first time we've seen this kind of question come up in a movie, but I did like that they did it here. It did add a bit more nuance to the story. Now as a whole, my initial complaint that the movie does seem like the middle child in a trilogy does still stand. It absolutely sets up a next movie and it apparently has a previous movie. And it feels that way. This does not feel like its own story. It feels like the connective tissue between two other stories. There's a movie here and there are some exciting times and the movie looks great overall with the exception of a few moments. But the fact of the matter is it's just not ever as big and grandose as it would like you to think that it is or that it thinks that it is. It's constantly working towards something bigger that I assume will get in the next movie. That being said, the movie was better than I was expecting. 
expected. I had a good enough time with it that I am interested in going back and checking out the original Occupation movie that came out in 2018. And while the narrative does come off a little bit light at times, it does at least try to inject some neat, interesting things into it, to varying degrees of success. The movie's performers all know what kind of movie they're in, and they play to that wonderfully. Are these great performances? No, but they are fun performances in an overall fun movie. Guys, at the end of the day, Occupation Rainfall was a pretty good time. I can't really speak to if I would have liked it more if I'd seen the previous movie or not, but I'd like to think that coming into the movie, I would have caught up a little bit faster if I had had that previous knowledge. It was a great looking movie, especially for the amount of money that they had. I'm really surprised at how much they had going on on screen here. This movie looked really damn good. It's got some entertaining action and it does try narratively to do something a bit more. Unfortunately though, it does suffer from middle child syndrome when it comes to trilogies. However, if you're willing to let a lot of that go and just have a good time with it, I think you will. An occupation rainfall is absolutely worth streaming. Across the street. I honestly expected this movie to be kind of a cheese fest, and it is in some ways, but not like that really goofy bag kind of cheese. It's more intentional, over the top, high quality cheesiness, and I can get down with that. So if you're looking for a great looking, if not too deep, fun sci-fi flick for the night, then check out Occupation Rainfall, and I think you'll have a pretty good time with it. So there it is, guys, my review of Occupation Rainfall. If you enjoyed, want more content like this? Hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Sydney. This movie does something that countless other sci-fi movies have done for decades that honestly, while it is kind of cool, it just doesn't make any fucking sense. And that is that they have some type of hand-to-hand -hand weapon, usually in the form of a sword. I mean, they've been doing this shit since Star Wars, hell, before Star Wars. And I just don't get it. You've got these technologically advanced civilizations that have like these laser guns and laser rays that will wipe out planets and all that stuff, and they can fly around, but they walk around with fucking swords. And it's no different here. They have swords in this movie too, and there are quite a few sword battles, and I'm just kind of thinking to myself, when this is happening, at what point is someone going to pull out one of the laser guns they have on their side and just go Indiana Jones style, pow, and kill the motherfucker? Is it an honor thing or something? I don't know. But I do know that if I was in that situation, I would have shot every last one of them motherfuckers with a sword, honor be damned. I don't really know if that says something about me, but whatever, I'd be the motherfucker who's alive.